Hey everyone, for today I'm going to read two chapters because they're a little bit shorter and I want to be able to get a little bit more read in this book as we continue to move along. We're reading from Allies by Alan Gratz, published by Scholastic Books, and they are uh, allowing us to record these videos while we're home dealing with the uh, COVID-19 virus. Today I'm going to be reading the chapters that are entitled Green Light, and the second one that I'm going to read to you is called Knees in the Breeze. We're, uh, by the way, our character in this section is James. He is Canadian, and he has joined the military, and so here we go. Green Light. James struggled to his feet. In addition to the standard equipment that he carried, his bread and light machine gun, extra bullet clips, Webley revolver, flares, knife, toggle rope, medical kit, canteen, and food rations, James was also carrying a weapon called a Piat. Piat stood for Projector, Infantry, Anti-Tank. The Piat could fire a bomb that would take out a tank if you got close enough. Very close. James carried the Piat and six of the two and a half pound bombs in a separate canvas bag that would dangle from his leg during his descent. Worried he'd come down without something he needed, James had packed far more gear than he had ever practiced jumping with. Although, or altogether, he had to be carrying around a hundred pounds of weight. Sam was carrying even more, and James had to help him stand up. James clipped his static line to the overhead cable that ran the length of the plane. After they jumped, the lines they clipped to the cable would pull tight, yanking their parachutes open for them. James sucked in a big breath, swaying and bumping into the soldiers on either side of him. He'd thought being chased by Marvin Lennox and his gang was scary. That was nothing compared to what he was feeling now. He and the others had practiced jumping over and over again in England, but they had never jumped into a hail of bullets over enemy territory before. Patunk! A bullet tore through the bottom of the plane. It hit a soldier who was standing near James, in the butt. He screamed and fell, but a medic was there a moment later to bandage him up and get him back on his feet. Either you were dead, or you jumped. James's captain stood at the front to address the platoon. Alpha Company's mission, he began in a loud voice, is to protect the 9th Battalion's left flank during their attack on the Merville Battery, then cover their advance to La Plain. James and all the rest of them had seen the reconnaissance maps. The Merville Battery was a heavily defended, steel-reinforced concrete bunker on the Normandy coast, which housed four 100mm howitzer cannons that were aimed right at the spot where soldiers would land on the beaches. La Plaine was a small village nearby. We will then seize and hold the Le Mesnil crossroads, the captain continued. Yeah, sure we will, James thought. He had a bad feeling about all this. Once you're down, head toward the objective as fast as you can, the captain told them. It'll be dark, so fight the enemy as cl at close quarters with knives and pistols and save the rifles for daylight when you can see who you're shooting at. Take no prisoners, they'll just slow you down. Through the open hatch in the floor of the plane, James saw that the fog was gone. It had been replaced by white and red flak and tracer fire that crisscrossed into the black night sky. They would be lucky if any of them hit the ground alive. What the heck am I doing here? James wondered yet again, and he turned to look at Sam. You volunteered for this, Sam reminded him again. Click. The red light changed to green, but the airplane hadn't slowed down. James frowned. The airplane always slowed down before you jumped in practice. Go, 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 the captain yelled. And James shuffled along in line with the others, cradling his leg pack and the bag with his Bren machine gun in it. There were three men in front of him, and then two, and then one, and then it was his turn. And James got down on the floor, dangled his legs over the side, and dropped out into nothing. Next chapter, Knees in the Breeze. James dropped. He let go of the bags he held, 
Both were tied to him and pulled his legs up, knees together. Knees in the breeze, as their jump instructors called it. He fell for what seemed like an eternity. Shouldn't his chute have opened already? He panicked, worrying suddenly that he'd forgotten to attach his static line inside the plane. Where was the manual release? Was he going to have to pull it? Then suddenly the cable connecting him to the plane went taut and whoom! James's chute opened, jolting him hard, the rope tying the heavy bag with the piot and the anti-tank rounds to his leg tightened and yanked him in the other direction, and James screamed in pain. The parachute pulled one way, and the bag pulled the other, each of them trying to pull James apart. He stretched his arms down, trying to reach the rope on his ankle. White, hot stars exploded in his eyes. If he could just pull up the bag, untie it, cut it, something, but he couldn't reach it. The rough strands of the rope cut into his skin. James's eyes rolled back into his head, and he felt himself losing consciousness. No, no, it was going to pull his foot off. It was going to cut right through his ankle and snap. The rope broke before his ankle did, and the heavy bag tumbled away into the darkness. Gone were the piot and the anti-tank rounds, but James didn't care. All that mattered was the sweet relief of freedom. His ankle still throbbed where the rope had cut into him, but he was still conscious and in one piece. James's arms and legs shook, and his breath came hard and fast, but his parachute seemed to be working. Tracer fire streaked all around him, blotted out here and there by the black silhouettes of dozens more parachutes. Suddenly, boom! One of the dark shapes dangling from a parachute exploded, and James gasped. He struggled in his harness, trying to back away, but there was nowhere to go. What could the Germans be, be firing at them that would make a man explode like that? As the shock wore off, he realized there was no mystery. A German machine gun had hit something explosive that the man was carrying. A gammon bomb, maybe. James watched in horror as the Flames burned through the parachute's cords and the body plunged to the earth. Oh, God, thought James suddenly. Was that Sam? But no, Sam hadn't been carrying a gammon bomb or anything else that would explode like that if it were hit. James let out a heavy breath. But where was his friend? Was he all right? Red-hot bullets screamed through the air around James, and he cursed and spun, trying uselessly to dodge them. The tracer fire came in high, missing him entirely, but he felt it rip at his parachute, filling it with holes and snapping some of the cords. The holes made him fall faster, and he twisted and turned, trying to see where he was coming down. He watched as another paratrooper hit the ground with a splash and disappeared. A splash? Was he coming down over a lake? There weren't any lakes on the map. James pulled on his chute, Steering away from the water as best he could, he fell faster. Faster? James's heart was in his throat. Where was he going to land? Everything was black. Was he coming down in a tree? A lake? A field full of landmines? Right on top of the German garrison? The dark earth loomed up at James, and he closed his eyes, and he braced for impact. All right, guys, that's the end of those couple of chapters in Allies. We'll see you for the next chapter, which is entitled Rommel's Asparagus. If you like what you heard, subscribe to our channels over here, and we'll talk to you soon.